Hello, my name is Doruk Kıcıkoğlu. I'd like to talk to you about our paper that is titled Aggregation Driven Progression for Guaps. And it's about a game with a purpose called Warmingo and how we implemented skills progression mechanics into it. So Warmingo is a game with a purpose developed for nat uh, collecting natural language processing annotations. Players first solve motivational puzzles, word games within the text. And, they, and then they make the annotations. But before delving more into Warmingo's mechanics, I'd like to very briefly tell you about other examples of the Games with a Purpose genre. So ESP game that came out in 2006 was the first example of Guaps, and it was quite a successful one. The game collects keyword tags for images, such as man and bird for this image. And on each game session, two players randomly match with each other. They're not allowed to communicate except for the common image that they see on the screen, for which they start typing keywords. And every time they, uh, every time the two players enter the same keyword, they both earn points, and the system in the background gathers keywords from the player's answers. So if two players, uh, both players has entered Barrett, the system knows that there is a Barrett within this image. So phrase detectors is uh, another uh, go up. It's one of the first examples again. And it was developed in 2009 by Dali Project. In this game, people read through text and ma they make an NLP annotations. And the game employs several gamification mechanics such as scoring and leaderboards. But it can be said that there, there are very few problems within the game that had room for improvement. First one being feedback. So by the nature of GOPs, the systems do not necessarily know the correct answer to a question until until a number of annotations have been collected. Such as here, the question is asking, has herself been mentioned before? And it, well, it may not necessarily know if uh, the, uh, the, answer, uh, the correct answer to this question, so it cannot provide immediate feedback to can't tell the player that their answer is correct or not. But in terms of engagement within games, feedback is uh, quite an essential aspect. And a second problem was that the players were presented with big blocks of text, where assuring, guaranteeing the comprehension of the text by the players is only achievable by assessing players' annotation ac accuracy. Um, so guaranteeing comprehension was a problem. And lastly, the game was mainly revolving around the annotation loop, where players uh, make annotations back to back, which could have, which did have some room for integration of more ludic experiences, hence generating more, more fun. So what is Warmingo? Warmingo was developed to be a more improved version of phrase detectors, where new features come in. So there are word game puzzles, motivational puzzles that we've added. And there's more customization of the playable content, the, the text. Additional gamification mechanics were added. And the most feature that we have added is the skills progression. So let's start with the puzzles. Uh, at the moment, Warmingo has three puzzles, each of which work over the blanks that you see over the text. And these words are removed from the text, and players uh, try to fill the fill these blanks with the correct answers, such as the first one, the first puzzle, fill the blanks. It is quite basic in that sense, where the players try to match the answers below with the blanks that you see at the top. The second puzzle is Hangman, a game that is quite widely known. So players again try to fill the blanks, by, but this time, they do it by guessing the correct letters from the keyboard below. And if they do more than six mistakes, the worm on the right reaches the bucket and they fail to earn points. The third puzzle is crosswords. So each row and column in the crossword you see below is the correct answer to a black blank at the top. And the players uh, swap the purple tiles that you can see to place them into their correct spaces. So every time a row or column is collect, uh, completed, a uh, blank has been correctly guessed. So why do we have puzzles in Warmingo? Well, um, puzzles solve two main problems. The first one is the cold start, cold start problem, meaning that gloves don't usually know the answer to a question initially. So since 
the blanks on the text were removed by the system by us. We already know the answers to these questions, and at least uh, within the within the puzzles uh, part of the game, we are able to provide immediate feedback. And after each puzzle, Warmingo asks the player to make an annotation. So yes, the puzzles at least uh, provide some feedback within uh, the within the puzzles. And the second problem that we are trying to address with puzzles is the fun element. So research shows that the more fun a guap a game is, the more engaged the players become, and hence they do produce better, more accurate annotations. So therefore, we like to make our games for more fun. However, reading people commonly may not find the activity of reading very much entertaining. So therefore, the puzzles being the word games, intend to create a more entertaining experience for the player. And meanwhile, since the players need to have at least a general idea of what is going on in the text in order to solve the puzzles, we also guarantee that the player has actually read the text and that it improves the comprehension of the text by the players. And what else we added in Warmingo? So in Warmingo, we tend to achieve a better customization of the content. The players are able to choose which categories of text they would like to play more often, making the experience more customized, more personal and engaging for them. Warmingo employs additional gamification mechanics, such as uh, being able to choose the difficulty of the game, which is especially essential for players who are playing to improve their language skills. Also, uh, social mechanics are featured in the game, where players can discuss about the text and annotations. And another feature is the inline translator in integrated into Warmingo that can translate uh, into 50 different languages. Warmingo includes a leaderboard and also awards players uh, badges every time they complete uh, 10 documents within a certain category. And the badges are visible on the discussion board, giving the players their, their bragging rights. And Warmingo also includes kinesthetic tutorials that teach the players by doing. And they are both for the puzzles and the annotations. So this is the tutorial for the discourse new uh, annotation task, which is the first annotation task that appears in the game. And the most recent feature that we experimented in Warmingo is the skills progression. So the, it's about the new uh, annotation task that comes after this course new task. So up until this, uh, the, the, this integration, uh, Warmingo has been collecting only this course new data, meaning uh, asking players if a, if a phrase uh, has been mentioned before or not. Um, however, uh, an LP on a Forda uh, usually features much more complicated tasks uh, in more ambiguous cases. So the non-referring task uh, can be one, uh, can be argue, cannot be argued to be one of them. And non-referring uh, cases are uh, labels um, that do not really refer to a real time, a real life object, such as uh, as in this example, when you say it is five o'clock or it's raining. The it here does not really refer to a real a real life object. And this is added, uh, this is uh, implemented by adding the NR button here, which means non-referring annotations. So this task adds an extra layer of complexity to the previ uh, previous discourse new task. So since this is the next task in uh, complexity, it was essential to assess the player's accuracy on the prior task uh, to maintain the overall accuracy of the whole collected data. So we want the players to uh, the players who achieve good enough in the discourse new task to be able to produce non-referring annotations. So after the research uh, that was conducted on this paper. We concluded that the threshold to progress to non-referring annotations should be uh, having completed at least 20 discourse new annotations and to achieve a 85% confidence level. So what is confidence level? It's not the same thing as the accuracy. 
the confidence uh, confidence level of a player is a different property than their accuracy. It's, um, so and the analysis on face detectors data showed that there can be cases where the majority of players can agree on an answer that is actually incorrect. But on the contrary, a smaller set of players with higher accuracy can be pointing to the correct one in the same in the same case in the same case. So such cases suggested that uh, relying solely on the number of votes on an answer does not guarantee the best aggregated answer. So, but rather players' accuracy should also be taken into account. So the, the players who are performing well should have a higher weight in the in the aggregation process. So MPA, the Mansion Pairs Annotation Model, is a program developed by Silvio Pound from uh, the DALI project. Um, has developed this uh, the MPA program that aggregates the annotation data with respect to the these factors based on Bayesian probabilistic method methods and it produces confidence scores uh, both for each annotation each aggregated annotation and for each player's performance on specific tasks so we have been using MPA in this regard to assess the player's confidence levels and in addition to assessing the confidence levels, players also need to undertake a number of discourse new tasks before proceeding to the next task. Um, so we analyze the player's average accuracy to see at what point they seem to reach a better understanding of the tasks. So the red line in this graph uh, shows the average accuracy of the players. Uh, with respect to the number of annotations that they have made, which is the y-axis, sorry, x-axis. The yellow one is a weighted calculation of the same value, uh, where players' accuracies are compared to the average accuracies of each document. Um, and the assessment here suggested that players uh, become more stable in terms of their task, uh, their comprehension after the tenth annotation. So for this reason, in the experiment made for this paper, players needed to make at least 10 discourse new annotations before being evaluated to qualify to the next task, which is non-referring. And since this plateau becomes even more flat after the 20th annotation, uh, eventually we decided that after the re uh, experiment, the 20 annotations would be uh, better threshold, but for this experiment, we limited to 10. And in the experiment, we divided the players into four groups. Um, all groups needed to make the 10 discourse new annotations uh, to qualify to the non referring task. Um, so players in group A were the control group. They did not need to reach a confidence level in order to progress. Players in level B and group B needed to achieve 80% confidence level, and group C needed to reach 85, and D needed to reach 90%. And this way, we were able to assess which threshold value would lead to better results. So the experiment um, also continued after the publication of this paper. So in the following slides, uh, the graphs on the left will be from the data uh, from the paper's publication uh, date, uh, while the graphs on the right will be from the end of the experiment. So these graphs that you see here show the number of players in experiment in the experiment. So B pass, you'll see B pass, C pass, D pass groups. So B pass is the gr uh, group of players who were within the B group and they reached the required threshold level, which was 80. And B fail are contrarily people from the B group that couldn't reach this level. And the same applies for C pass and D pass. So here we see the percentage of players uh, who failed to pass the threshold. And as expected, the higher we set the threshold closer to the group D, the higher the number of uh, players who failed uh, becomes. So this factor uh, hinders us from setting the threshold too high, as this involves the risk of losing data that was already on a decade level if we set the threshold too high. 
And on the next graphs, uh, it shows the number of annotations collected from each group. So the fail groups uh, also show uh, non-referring tasks, and these are the players who failed at, uh, who managed to proceed to the non-referring task at first. Uh, but on the follow-up, they dropped out uh, because their MPA confidence uh, level dropped, so they were back at the fail groups. So they did success for a while, but then they uh, made the wrong annotations, so the, they were re-evaluated. Also on this graph, uh, we observed that although the, the fail group has not uh, passed the threshold, they have comparably produced a high level of annotation, high number of annotations. So this may suggest that there might have been a lot of uh, data uh, that could have been collected within the NR uh, task. The next graph shows the average number of non-referring annotations that each group produced. As observed from the B, C, and D groups, uh, setting the threshold too high also leads to fewer annotations. This may be because players consume most of the time to reach the set threshold, and they were later on dropping out earlier, so by the time they could progress, uh, they had lost the time that they could have been spending on making the non-referring annotations. The next charts are uh, based on the players uh, from certain bands of confidence levels uh, for the discourse new task, and rather than their research groups. Uh, for example, on the graph on the right, there has been 60 players whose confidence level was over 90, and there was 29 players who were below 55 confidence level. And on the next one, we observe the players uh, non-referring accuracy with respect to their confidence bands. So we observed that after the 0.85 confidence level, players um, reach a higher level of non-referring uh, confidence, although the difference is very slight. The uh, difference goes about uh, 0.6. The confidence goes about, about 0.6. On the next graph, we observe that the players above 85 co uh, confidence level again also produce more non-referring annotations. Hence, setting the, the threshold to 0.85 instead of 0.8 uh, does not really yield to tremendous amount of uh, loss of data. And since the players above 85 confidence level reach decent confidence levels, it can be uh, we can argue that. Uh, well, this threshold would be the most viable for the current skills progression system in Warmingo, and therefore we conclude that uh, for the current assessment, the 0.85 uh, is the good threshold to progress to the next task, which is non-referring task. So thank you for watching this presentation. Uh, please email me if you have any questions, and don't forget to visit our website for more about uh, our research on GWAPs and linguistics. Thank you.